Part 7. Stay Passionate About Life. Chapter 28 Plan for Blessing. If you want to become a better you, it is important to put the right actions along with your faith. It's not enough to believe, as important as that may be. We have to take it one step further and start expecting. While we are expecting good things from God, we should be making plans. We need to talk as if what we are praying about is going to happen. We should dare to step out in faith and act like it's going to happen. When a couple is expecting a baby, they make all sorts of preparations. Why? Because they know a child is on its way. The fact is, in the early stages of the pregnancy, they haven't seen the baby or touched it. Yet they have faith in the doctor's report, so they start making preparations. God has put dreams in every one of our hearts. We all have things for which we are believing. Perhaps you are believing to overcome an illness, believing to get out of debt, or believing to accomplish your dreams. Here's the key, we have to go beyond believing. True faith puts action behind it. If you're sick, you need to start making plans to get well. If you're struggling in your finances, start making plans to prosper. If your marriage is on the rocks, start making plans to see that relationship restored. Lay your faith on the line. Too often, we say that we are believing God for good things, yet with our actions, we're doing just the opposite. Understand that your faith will work in either direction, positively or negatively. I know some people who plan to get the flu. At the grocery store, I hear them predicting their future, well, it's flu season. I had better pick up some of this flu medicine just in case. After all, it was bad last year. I got lucky and didn't get it. But I'll probably get it this year. They talk as though it is sure to happen. They take it even further and put actions behind their negative faith, by purchasing the flu medicine. Not surprisingly, a few weeks later they come down with the flu. Their faith worked, albeit negatively. They expected the flu, made plans for it, and they got it. Remember, your faith will work in either direction. Please don't misinterpret what I am saying. It is prudent to take precautions, we have medicine at our house. However, I don't think we should run to the pharmacy every time a television commercial announces that flu season is here. Funny, sometimes we put more faith in those commercials than we do in what God says. I love what it says in Psalms, a thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near my dwelling. 56 Everybody at work may be getting the flu, everybody at school may have it, but I believe God has put a hedge of protection around me, and I'm going to stay in faith and not make plans to get it. If we read the news long enough, and watch all the studies, they'll nearly talk us into having heart disease, high cholesterol, diabetes, and all sorts of ailments. Well, you know what they say, one in four people gets cancer, a pessimistic friend points out. Maybe that's true, but let's believe we will be among the three who don't get it instead of one of those who do. It is just as easy to believe for the positive as it is the negative. Start making plans to live a long healthy life. When you face sickness, and we all have things come against us from time to time, don't just give up and start making plans to live with it. I've had people tell me, well, Joel, I'm learning to live with my arthritis. I learning to live with my high blood pressure. No, that's not your high blood pressure, that's not your sickness. Quit taking ownership of it and start making plans to get well. Our attitude should be, this sickness didn't come to stay, it came to pass. Say things such as, I know with long life, God is going to satisfy me. So I declare it by faith, I'm getting better and better every day in every way. Don't quit dreaming, keep the vision in front of you. A friend of mine was in an accident where both of his knees were crushed. The doctor told him he would be fortunate to walk, but he would certainly never run or play sports again. My friend was so disappointed. After being in the hospital for over three months, the first thing he did when he was discharged was to join a health club. He took a step of faith. The fact is, he couldn't go to the club for over a year. He was too weak but he made up his mind he was not going to sit back and plan on staying in that wheelchair, he was making plans to be up walking again. That was more than five years ago, and today that young man can outrun me. He defied the odds. What happened? He started making plans to rise up out of that injury.
he could have easily let the doctor's negative words sink in, convincing him to give up, and settle for mediocrity. Instead, he believed God and began making plans to be well. Maybe you've had some negative things happen to you or some negative comments spoken over you. Don't allow those negatives to take root. Keep believing for good things. And remember, faith is always in the now. Get up every morning saying, Father, I thank you that right now you are working in my life. I thank you that right now I'm getting better. Right now things are changing in my favor. Stay in the now, faith is always in the present. Avoid planning for defeat. We frequently prepare for the wrong things. A man told me that when his father got up in years, he had a terrible time with his eyesight. He got to the point where he couldn't read anymore. This was a common malady for the older members of their family. This man was already making plans to have poor eyesight. He said, Joel, I love to read. So I've started buying all of my books on CD now. That way I can listen to them just in case something ever happens to my eyesight. That's planning for the wrong things. That's putting your faith in the negative, allowing, even welcoming, it to come to pass. I told him, you need to keep buying regular books that you always read. And even when you get older, don't start buying these large print books just because some of your friends are, or it makes it a little easier for you. No, if you don't need it, don't take the easy way out. And even if you do need it, put that off until you cannot read the smaller print anymore. Don't give up any ground. Victoria has always had good eyesight, 20-20 vision. But over the last couple of years she's developed some difficulty in reading print up close. I've tried to get her to go see the eye doctor, but she wouldn't do it. She could not stand to think about the fact that her vision might be impaired a bit. Finally, I talked her into it. She went to the optometrist, and he said her eyes were strong. She needed the lowest power reading glasses, the kind you can buy over the counter at the grocery store. Still, it has been like pulling teeth for her to give in to wearing those things. I love the fact that she's not going to just sit back and accept it, she stands against it. She has put it off and put it off and put it off. We'll go to a restaurant and she'll have to hold the menu 18 inches away just to see it. It's like my dad used to say, God, you're either going to have to heal my eyes or lengthen my arms. Victoria refuses to sit back and say, well, I guess I'm getting older. Or, I guess my vision is going downhill. No, she will not make plans for defeat. I read a study the other day. It included a chart that showed how at different ages, certain parts of our bodies start to decline. According to the research, when we get to be 30 years old, our hearing diminishes so much every year. We lose so much muscle mass every year. Our brain cells decrease by a certain percentage each year. If you start believing all those reports and acting on them, no wonder your body is falling apart. The other day someone told me, Joel, I just turned 60 and I can't hear as well as I used to. I knew this day was coming. Everybody told me my hearing would go down. I told the person, you are agreeing with the wrong voices. Quit putting your faith in the wrong places, and start agreeing with what God says about you. It says in Deuteronomy 34, verse 7, that when Moses was 120 years old, his eye was not dim and his natural strength was not abated. That means he could still see clearly, he could hear clearly, he was strong and healthy. I don't know about you, but I'm going to believe to live out my days like Moses. Instead of listening to all these negative reports, let me give you a different report. Let me give you a study found in God's word. It says in effect, at 60, you're still supposed to hear well. At 70, your mind is supposed to be as sharp as it was when you were 25. At 80, you're supposed to be full of joy, full of life, full of energy. Why don't you start making plans to live a long, healthy, satisfied life? Back in the early 1990s, we were remodeling the old sanctuary at Lakewood Church, especially the platform area. At that time, my father was more than 70 years old. One of the architects I was working with said, Joel, your dad's getting a little older. Don't you think we should put a wheelchair ramp up to the side of the platform, just in case he ever needs a wheelchair? The architect was a nice man, and he meant well. But I thought to myself, you don't know my father. If he heard you say that, 
he would chase you out of this county. My dad was never planning on being in a wheelchair. Don't make plans to get old and bent over and not be able to do anything. Keep your faith out there. Speak words of health over yourself. Talk about the long life God is giving you, then put some actions behind it. I know a man in his 90s who still lives in his own home alone, and his bedroom is on the second floor. That means several times every day he goes up and down those stairs. His children and grandchildren have tried to talk him into moving into one of the empty bedrooms downstairs, but he won't do it. His mind is made up. He said, Joel, I know if I give in, I'll never be able to go back up those stairs. He's probably right. Certainly, we should use common sense, we have to be realistic. What I'm saying is don't make plans for defeat. Everybody around you may be getting old and cranky, complaining that this part of his body doesn't work or that part of her body is failing, but you can be the exception. Believe to live a long, healthy life. My father wanted to preach for as long as he lived. He didn't want to retire. He used to tell me, Joel, I will never have a stroke. He was saying that by faith because he struggled with high blood pressure his entire life. He would say, I'll never be incapacitated. I'll never come to the place where I cannot preach. And true to his faith, my father preached just 11 days before he went to be with the Lord. God gave him the desires of his heart, because he was bold enough to put his faith out there. He believed he was going to be productive right up until the day that he died, and he was. It's easy to think, well, the law of entropy is setting in, everything is moving toward disintegration. So of course my body is debilitating. That's just a part of getting older. This doesn't work. That doesn't work. Can't see. Can't hear. Cranky. No, don't fall into that trap, especially not the cranky part. There are enough cranky people in the world already. Make plans to be healthy, to be full of joy, to be productive right up to the day God calls you home. In the Old Testament, when Caleb was 80 years old, he said, God, give me another mountain. He was saying, give me something else to do. Give me another assignment. Notice, he was planning on living out his life in victory. He could have said, God, just let me retire. My back is hurting. I can hardly see anymore. Medicare wouldn't pay for that latest prescription. I'm so aggravated. No, he was strong, energetic, and ready for the next challenge, even at 80 years of age. You are never too old to do something great for God. You can be sure that regardless of your age God has important plans for you to fulfill. You are not just taking up space, waiting to go to heaven. Get your joy back, get your enthusiasm back. Don't wither up like a prune, instead, make plans to live every day joyfully, vibrantly alive, healthy, and productive. An older couple came to one of Lakewood's leadership conferences, and during a question and answer session, they stood up and the man said, Joel, we're not real sure what we're supposed to be doing at our age. He said that they were in their 90s. This man was dressed to the nines, his skin looked great. His eyes sparkled with life. His wife was the epitome of grace and beauty. They were a sharp, striking older couple. I told them, one thing you need to do for sure is to go around and let other people see you. Be an example, your joy, your health, your peace, your victory is an inspiration to others. I said, you need to let the younger generation, which, in your case, is anyone under 80, see how you can be up there in years and still be healthy, joyful, and peaceful. That elderly couple inspired me. I tell Victoria every week I'm believing for at least 40 more good years of strong, productive ministry. 40 years of sharing God's word, encouraging people, building the kingdom. Not 30 good years, and then the last 10, my back's hurting. This doesn't work, that doesn't work, no joy, no peace. No, I've got my faith out there. I'm believing that at 80 years old, I'm going to be just as vibrant as I am right now. I will still have my hair, still be telling my jokes, still be teasing my brother Paul. I'm making plans to live a long, healthy, prosperous, joy-filled, abundant life. Why don't you do the same thing? I know a lady who went through an extensive medical checkup when she was about 70 years old. After the doctors compiled all of her information, they gave her an average life expectancy. 
Based on their findings, her health, her genetics, and her family history, they estimated that she'd probably live to be around 75 years old. The doctors might as well have told her that she was going to die the next day. She got so depressed that she wouldn't come out of her house. She lost her joy and her peace. Basically, she just gave up living her life. This went on for a while, until one day, her family brought her to see me. I told her, don't make plans for the worst. Don't let the negative take root. God can do what man's human intelligence and medical science can't do. And I found sometimes these experts, even though they're fine people, they can be wrong. We talked further, and I tried to encourage her. I could tell by the expression on her face that she was filling up with faith. Today, that woman is 81 years old and as healthy and vibrant as can be. When I saw her recently, she said, Joel, I've already beaten it by six years. I laughed and said, yeah, and when you make it to 90. We're going to have a real party around here. And we will. While it is important that you don't let negative thoughts and declarations take root, it is equally important to set high goals for your life. My father always believed that he would live to preach into his 90s. He didn't quite make it, but he used to say, I'd rather shoot high and miss it than shoot low and make it. Keep a high goal. I used to play basketball with a gentleman who was in his 70s. He was in great shape and could run up and down the court with the 20-year-olds. One day he said, Joel, it's funny. When I was 40, my doctor told me that my knees wouldn't hold up playing this much, but I just kept playing. At 50, he told me my back would start hurting if I kept running and jumping like this. But I just kept on. At 60, he told me I could never keep up physically, but I can still run with the young guys. He said, I went back at 70, and finally the doctor told me to just keep playing as much as I want. I laughed and asked him, how long are you going to play? He smiled and said, I'm going to play until I get old. I like that. Old is a state of mind. Your body may age, but if you'll stay young in your spirit, your body will age even better. This man had the heart of a 25-year-old. He was always grateful and happy, always in a good mood. You could tell that he wasn't making plans to get old and worn out. He was planning on living out his life joyfully, vibrantly, and in good health. Maybe you have a history of serious illnesses in your family. You must stand against those diseases and believe God for good health. You can be the exception. You can be the one to start a new standard for your family. Here's what you have to do. You must think differently, and you need to take a different tack, take different actions. You cannot prepare for defeat and expect to live in victory. Keep your faith working for you, rather than against you. Grandmother Austin, my grandmother on my father's side, was a feisty woman. She stood only about five feet tall, but she had a big faith. One time, when she was older in life, she went to see her doctor. He said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Austin, but you're in the beginning stages of Parkinson's disease. Well, Grandmother Austin didn't know what that was, but she was sure she didn't want to have any part of it. She bristled back and she got real stern. She said, listen here, doctor, I'll not have that. I refuse to have it. I'm too old to have it. She went home and never did come down with Parkinson's disease. She just kept doing what she'd always been doing, planning on living a long, healthy life. She didn't let the negative words take root. I realize that we can't just wish things away, sometimes we can't even pray them away, but we can decide what we're going to plan for. We can plan to get old and lose our health, or we can plan to live a long, healthy, blessed, prosperous life. What are you planning for today? Sickness or divine health? To barely get by or to be blessed? To stay where you are or to rise higher and accomplish your dreams? According to our actions or lack of action, we are making plans for something. There's an interesting story in the Bible about a widow. Her husband died and she didn't have enough money to pay her bills. The creditors were coming to take her two sons as payment. The only thing she had of any value was a small pot of oil. Elisha the prophet showed up at her home and he instructed her to do something rather unusual. He said, go out to all your neighbors and gather up as many large empty containers that you can find, big jars that can be used to hold oil. 
Elisha told her specifically, don't get just a few, get as many as you can possibly find. No doubt, in the natural, it seemed like the woman was simply wasting her time. Elisha knew he had to get her faith going in the right direction. She had been sitting around long enough preparing for defeat. Now he was trying to get her to start preparing for victory. So she gathered up all sorts of empty containers, brought them home, and Elisha told her to pour the oil that she had into one of the other containers. At first, it looked as though she was merely going to transfer it from one container to another, but the scripture says her oil never ran out. She kept pouring and pouring and pouring. God supernaturally multiplied it until every single container was completely full. If she would have gotten a dozen more containers, they would have been full as well. Friend, we are the ones who limit God, His resources are unlimited. If you will believe Him for more, regardless of your circumstances, He can provide, even if it takes a miracle to do so. Let me challenge you, have a big dream for your life. Make provision for abundance. I'd love to pay my house off, I hear you say. I'd love to get out of debt, but I don't see how it could happen for me. I've gone as far in my career as I can go. I'd love to send my children to college, but it's so expensive these days. No, are you making provisions? Do you have a savings account opened up? Do you have any containers? Well, Joel, that'd be kind of foolish to have an account and not have anything to put in it. The woman in Alicia's day did precisely that. She took a step of faith. It's not enough just to believe. Put actions behind your faith. Do what you can. Are you being your best on the job, showing up early, going the extra mile, doing more than expected? Are you dressing for success? You may have only one suit. Clean it up, press it, and wear it like you own the place. Are you talking successful talk? Well, everybody gets promoted except me. They're talking about laying off people at my job, and last week my washing machine broke. If it's not one thing, it's another. No, dwelling on that sort of talk will only prepare you for defeat. Change your attitude and change what you're saying. Start saying, this is going to be a blessed day, I'm having a good month. This is the best year of my life. I know great things are in store. Goodness and mercy are following me. God's favor is surrounding me. I am expecting increase, promotion, and abundance. Don't stop there. Start making plans to prosper. Prepare to succeed, not to fail. When my father went to be with the Lord back in 1999 and I stepped up to pastor the church, one of the first things I did was to cancel our weekly television time. I thought, I've never preached before and I'm sure not going to get on television and preach. So I called our representative from the main national network on which we were broadcasting at the time. He was a good friend and I told him what had happened and how we were going to have to cancel our broadcast. What was I doing? I was making plans for defeat. I was making plans to do poorly. I didn't think I could preach, I couldn't imagine that anybody would want to listen to me, so I put actions behind my faith. But I was stretching my faith in the wrong direction. When I got home that night, I casually mentioned to Victoria what I'd done. She said, Joel, you need to get that time back. People all over the country are waiting to see what's going to happen to Lakewood. When she said that, something resonated within me, and I knew that it was right. We immediately took steps to get the broadcast time back, and today the broadcast goes out all over the world. Many times, with our own actions, we are limiting God. Had I not taken a step of faith in the right direction, I don't know if we'd be on television today. We cannot prepare for defeat and expect to have victory. Maybe you are preparing to fail, preparing to barely get by or to lose your health. Start preparing for good things, prepare for success, prepare for abundance. Prepare for victory, prepare for a long life, prepare for good health, get your faith going in the right direction. Start making plans to live a blessed, prosperous, healthy, joy-filled, abundant, long life. If you do this, God will do more than you can even ask or think. He will pour out his blessings and favor and you will become a much better you.